Hello everyone, welcome back, and what a performance from FC Barcelona as they beat Girona 4-1. And just Hansi Flick, you have to give so much praise and appreciation to what he's done with this squad because, I mean, Danny Omo and Paul Victor, those were the two signings that he got, and this looks like a completely different team compared to last year with Barcelona because they came up against Girona, and even though Girona, last year they did have Savinho, Dovbic, they, they lost a, a few key players, right? It's not the same exact squad as last year, but they were a great team. They, they did very well to place in the top four of La Liga, and Barcelona, they lost to them both times last year, home and away. And both times that they came up against Girona, they scored four goals against Barcelona. And now Barcelona were the one to score four against them. So I'm just so impressed with the way that Barcelona played, with the way that they performed, all the chances that they created this game, and of course, all, all the goals that they scored were just so enjoyable to watch. I just love the way that Barcelona have been playing under Hansi Flick. And that first goal from Lamini Mall, that's exactly what Hansi Flick wants to see. You're pressing high, you're pressing in a dangerous area of the pitch, and you're making it difficult for the opponent. I think a lot of times, Barcelona, they just looked a little bit lazy. They looked like they were making it easy for the other team, but that's not what we've seen in the first five games from Barcelona because they've done so well. Of course, their winning record is incredible. The goals that they're putting up are great, but their performances overall, the pressing that, that Hansi Flick is installing into the team, that's great to see because that's exactly why Barcelona went 1-0 up so early in this game is because Lamine Yamal was pressing in a dangerous area of the pitch and then he got 1v1 with the keeper and what a finish, sent him the wrong way. And then 5-10 to 10 minutes later, Lamine Yamal, he found himself at the edge of the box. The ball just settled in very nicely for him. One-time finish into the side netting. He is just such a special player. I, I couldn't believe just both of those finishes. At 17 years old, he was on the verge of a hat trick. It wasn't to be today, but... He was just so, so good. And, and of course, just an incredible performance yet again from him. Not just the goals, but his overall play. It's just, I just cannot believe how good this kid is. It's incredible. And of course, those two goals that he scored, I'm just so happy that he got both of those. And then I think some people are going to talk about this penalty. And to be honest, I think Girona, they really struggled to break Barcelona down. I think the only time that they really had chances were when they were playing it long. And I think that's kind of expected because with Hansi Flick, with the way that they, he wants to play... He's playing in a high line, right? He's trying to win the ball back in dangerous areas of the pitch. So there are going to be some space in behind, right? There are going to be some times when Girona, they'll play a long ball. It'll break Barcelona down. That's expected, right? So there were a couple chances like that in the first half. And that penalty call, initially I did think, yeah, that's pretty obvious it's a pen because Anigo Martinez's arm, it was all the way up here. It was not really on the side of his body. He was trying to head the ball. But I'll, I'll pull it up on the screen right now. The rule is that if it's from an opponent then and it goes right on to Anigo Martinez his hand, then yes, that would have been a penalty. But because it was Balde that was heading it down to his teammate that was only maybe a foot away, that's why he did not give it as a penalty. I was really confused how it took so long, and I actually think Ter Stegen prevented that penalty from being taken because he was delaying the penalty, and then the referee, that he went to VAR. I was pretty surprised, honestly, that they overturned that, and that could have potentially changed the game if maybe they went 2-1 um, up. They were still 2-1 up, right? But Girona, maybe they could have came back, but I just think the way that Barcelona played, that penalty was so against the run of play. So I'm not really super worried about that penalty. It definitely could have been called. I was pretty surprised, as I said, that they overturned it. But according to the rules, if it's a teammate that is heading the ball down to their own teammate's hand, then it's not supposed to be given as a penalty. And that's exactly what VAR did. So according to the rules, that was not a penalty. But we don't know the, 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 the handball rule in the box is just so unpredictable. You don't really know what's going to happen because... I mean, it was point blank as well. It's not like Inigo Martinez really had the opportunity to move his hand, but it was in definitely an unnatural position. But because it was the teammate, it wasn't a penalty. And I think Barcelona, even if they would have went 2-1, they were still 2-1 up, I still think they could have scored three, four, five goals in the second half. Just the way that they were playing. It was such a dominant performance from Barcelona. And I was so impressed with the way that Hansi Flick lined the team up and the way that the players performed. And that third goal is also something that Hansi Flick is trying to utilize at Barcelona because you know, when, once Jules Koundé or Alejandro Balde, Kubarsi, once they get the ball and it's maybe a little bit difficult to break the opponent down, it's nice when you have a long ball, when you have an outlet and someone like Rafinha and Dani Omo, they're running into the box. They're trying to, you know, get past and beyond their, their defender. And Dani Omo, I did not think he was shooting that. He did have Rafinha open, Lewandowski for the cutback. But if you have the confidence that Dani Omo has currently, and he's just playing in the best form that he's been in in his career, at least since I've been keeping up with him, and of course, just that finish was incredible. Danny Omo has been such an impactful signing. Three goals in three games. And also, his overall play, I think, was great. I don't think as great of a performance, but he did come back from a knock at an international break. I'm definitely not slandering his performance at all. But in those first two games, it was like every touch that he was making was progressive. It was the right touch, and the right pass, a little dribble here and there. And I think he did have some good movements in this game as well. And overall, 
I've just been so impressed with the way that Hansi Flick has utilized him. Because at first with Danny Olmo, I thought potentially he was going to be used as, as a replacement for Nico Williams since they couldn't sign him and played on the left. And it wouldn't really utilize his strengths. But I think some coaches would have done that. But Hansi Flick, he's getting the best out of Danny Olmo and Rafinha as well on the left. I think he also had a solid performance today. And then that fourth goal, Mark Casado. I want to talk about him individually as well. But what, what a pass to Pedri. And Pedri with the composure to round the keeper and slot at home. Just such an incredible performance. All four goals, I was really impressed with. Not just the individual brilliance, but also you felt like it was something that Hansi Flick was working at in training. And I think that's exactly why Pedri went and hugged Hansi Flick. And that was so nice to see because I just think all the players, they have the confidence from the coach. And there's just such a great connection there. And I think that's why it's working so well every single time that Barcelona plays so far. And then of course, Marc Casado starting alongside Pedri. I think he was brilliant today. Casado He's not maybe as composed on the ball as someone like Mark Bernal. I don't think he's as smooth and as, as much of a composer as, as Mark Bernal was because I think you see a lot of Busquets comparisons, which I don't want to say that, but Bernal is just slow and every single touch that he takes, it looks effortless. It looks like he's just making the right pass every single time. I don't think Mark Casado is that type of player. He's a different profile, but the way that he wins the ball back, I think is incredible. His effort for 90 minutes, it's great. And of course, to see him get that assist, you can saw, you can see how much it meant to him. I'm really impressed with Marcus Sato so far this season. And who knows, against the better opponents, will he be able to keep up? You know, maybe sometimes his distribution isn't on the same level as someone like Mark Bernal or, of course, Pedri. But I don't think that's what he's in the in the team to do. I think he's in the team to win the ball back, to press very, very well. And, of course, to make the simple passes, right? I'm, you're not expecting him to, to do everything that Pedri does, right? But I think Marcus Sato was great today. I think he did his job very effectively, and I think he's going to be an important player for Hansi Flick, especially with all the injuries to the Barcelona's midfield, and it was just great to see him do well, and I know he had a great season with Barca B, and he was the captain of the team, and a lot of Barca fans, you know, the the, the fans that kept up with those games, they really wanted to see Marcus Soto make the jump to the first team. It didn't happen under Xavi last season. He maybe got one or two appearances, but Hansi Flick, he decided to trust him in preseason. He played him every single game for 90 minutes, I think, almost every single game, so of course, he, he saw the trust in Casado. He saw the player that he was and what he could offer to Barcelona. And it's something that Barca have been missing, someone that's running for 90 minutes. I think what Gavi did, of course, was brilliant every, every single time that he was on the field because he was working nonstop. And he, he had the heart of Barcelona. And I think Casado, I'm not, not trying to make Gavi comparisons, of course, but I just think that effort off the ball is really what has helped Barcelona. Because when you have Gunawan, Frankie de Jong, Pedri, of course, those players on the ball are brilliant. They're, they're some of the best in the world in their position on the ball. But they just don't do that work off the ball that someone like Marcus Sato will do. So I've been really impressed with him. And I'm, I'm glad that he's continuing to get minutes. And to see him get that assist off a brilliant pass. I mean, that was incredible. I feel like I'm saying brilliant a lot. But that's just how great the performance was today. It was it was amazing. And yeah, the commentators were saying, I don't know if he meant that. Pretty sure he, he definitely meant that. So a brilliant, a great pass to Pedri um, to break the defense down and, and split them. That's just, just such a nice pass. And then Pedri, of course, with the composure to, to make the finish. And just a great performance again from Marcus Sato today. And I'm really impressed with the way that he's been introduced to the first team. And as I've said with Hansi Flick, I also like the subs that he made. I think a lot of Barca fans maybe wanted to see Guilla Fernandez come in, which I think he'll get his minutes. He's 16 years old. You don't want to rush him into the first team. There's really no need for that. But of course, 4-1 up, yeah, maybe he could have gotten some minutes. But that's not the biggest thing at the end of the day. It's it's to get three points. And, and I mean, Jared Martin got minutes. Hector Fort. Um, who else? Ferran Torres. Ferran Torres, I don't know what he's doing going into that challenge. I understand he has the right to try and win the ball, but don't get sent off don't get sent off when you're winning 4-1. And you know, a lot of Barca fans, they've they've definitely not been a big fan of Ferran Torres for the last couple seasons. And I made a video basically saying that hopefully Hansi Flick can actually get some use out of him. And I think I lost some subscribers just for saying that. So I know Ferran Torres is not a big fan to to Barcelona fans, right? Or he's not not a fan favorite. But I still think Ferran Torres can be utilized maybe in the last 20, 30 minutes of the game. Maybe he can chip in with a goal or at least press. Get some use out of him, right? Because you paid $55 million for him. Would you like to just sit him on the bench? Of course not. There's still a great player in there, I believe. Uh, maybe we will not see it at Barcelona, but I think that's what, what fans saw when he was at Valencia. Of course, when Pep signed him for Man City, he did show some moments of brilliance there. And with Spain, he has a great goal-scoring return. But it's just, that was really not smart of him to go into that challenge. And hopefully he didn't hurt the other player. Because I think it was the number 10 on Girona who I thought was great today. I never heard of him, but I'll need to look into him more because he looked very good. But yeah, Ferran Torres, I just don't know what you're doing going into that. 
Maybe some Barca fans will say that's not enough to be a red card, but it just was a really reckless challenge when the game was basically done anyways. There's maybe five to ten minutes left. And and if you go at someone's ankle like that, it really could have been a very bad injury. So you just don't want to do that. Uh, Ferran Torres, that's really not smart from him. And now he misses the next three games, which, I mean, it could have been nice for him to gain some momentum, continue to try and score for Barca because he scored in the last game. That Barca won 7-0. I just don't know what you're doing there. That was pretty frustrating. Pop Victor also, nice to see him getting minutes as well. Maybe could have had a goal or two, but still, it was nice. He was making good runs in behind. His touches were good. His passes were, were neat. So I was really impressed with all the substitutions that Hansi Flick made. And overall, the performance from everyone. I mean, Pedri, of course, just incredible yet again. Kunde, solid as ever. And Kubar C, his distribution is so good. And Igor Martinez, yeah, I think some Barca fans were maybe upset with the penalty that they thought was going to be given. Which, yeah, his arm was in a very unnatural position, but it was off his teammate, so I can't really blame him, and he was turning his back. So it was just, uh, you know, the, the connection between Balde and Inigo Martinez sometimes looks a little bit off, but overall, the, the defense, of course, against Girona, you're going to concede some chances, and I think they just did so well to combat them and to make it difficult for Girona to break them down. And, of course, I mean, that Girona team, as I said, they lost Savinia, they lost Dobrik, Eric Garcia came back from loan, Pablo Torre came back from loan, there are some players that they've definitely missed, and they haven't started the season as well as they ended the last one, but Barcelona, to beat them 4-1 away from home, just coming back from international break, I'm so impressed with the way that they played. And Barcelona this week, before their next game in La Liga, they do have a game against Monaco, who they lost to in the preseason, which that was not a great performance from Barca. I wasn't super worried, and it seems like Barcelona, they're in a good run of games. So this will be a really good test, right? This is the Champions League. This is the new format. They play eight games in the group stage. I'm so excited for that, right? I can't believe that the Champions League is already coming up this week. I'm very excited, of course. And we're excited to see Barca come up against a very difficult European team, right? Monaco, they did very well against Barca in preseason. So you want to try and see the better side of Barca. And I think, of course, they've gotten runs of games in La Liga. They looked very good. They've scored a lot of goals. They've created loads of chances and shots. So that's very good, right? That's promising. You're coming into this game in a good run of form. Hopefully, Danny Olmo is back from his injury. That was a little bit worrying because he came off in the 60th minute. It seemed like it was maybe a knee issue. He did pick up a knock in the Spanish national team camp. And then he rejoined Barcelona. He didn't play their last game. Hopefully, there's nothing there, right? Hopefully, he's able to be fit. But if you have to rest him, there are players in that position that can do the job. Probably not as well as Dani Olmo because he's been great. But, you know, you don't want to rush him back from injury. You want to give him as much time as possible to recuperate, right? But then they have a game in La Liga next weekend. I'm just so excited with the way that Barcelona have been playing. It's just been so great to watch. It's been refreshing. This, this, this is the Barcelona that we want to see because all the talent that they have at their disposal, we knew they could have been playing better than this. We knew or we knew that they could have been playing better than they were last season, at least. Because, I mean, of course, a team with the talent that Barca have, they can be, they should be winning games by more than one goal. And this is exactly what we're seeing. Let me name all two beautiful goals in the first half. Danny Omo, moment of individual brilliance, just incredible volley from him. And then, of course, that fourth goal was great as well. And I've just been really enjoying the way that they've been playing. Of course, we all have. And it's just nice seeing Hansi Flick get the best out of his team, right? We don't know if we can keep this up, this great goal-scoring form up. But we can hope, right? Because there are a lot of great players at Hansi Flick's disposal. He's getting the best out of players like Rafinha. Lewandowski, I think, is, is doing decent as well. Um, Danny Omo has been great. Pedri, Casado, and the defense looks good as well. So I'm really impressed, right? And we all are, because another 4-1 win against a team that Barcelona really struggled against last season. As I said, maybe they don't have as stacked of a squad as they did the last time Barcelona met them. But in two games, Barcelona conceded eight goals against Girona. And this season, with relatively the same squad for Barcelona, I mean, they beat them 4-1, and they easily could have scored more than one goal. And that, that one goal that they conceded was just, you know, a, a moment of, of good play from Girona, but also just... Not not the best defensively. I think it was a lapse of concentration from Barca's back line and Ter Stegen as well, maybe. But yeah, Barcelona as well. Just I'm, I'm just so excited with the way that they're playing. And you're looking forward to every single game and you just don't want the game to end, right? And that's exactly what I think we were missing last season because it was just like, all right, just try and get this result. If it's 1-0, I mean, I guess we can try and make it work. But Hansi Flick, he makes you enjoy the 90 minutes again. And no matter the scoreline, he's making you enjoy the way that Barca had playing. And that the Barca are playing. And that's what we've been missing for so long. So again, so impressed with the way that they played today. And I'm so excited for the game in the Champions League midweek. And as always, thank you very much for watching my video. I apologize for not making any videos in the last week. I did have some family come to visit, but also 
Barcelona during the international break. I think the rumors that we're hearing are, you know, they don't have much validity. I will say one rumor that we've been hearing a little bit is Erling Holland to Barcelona. So I will do a video about that, just talking about the possibility if we are ever going to see that, because it does seem like a long stretch right now, given the fact that Barcelona, they really struggled to register their players this summer. Then can you go and sign one of the best players in the world? That's that's a big question mark, right? But I wanted to talk about the possibility because I think it's very interesting. But as always, thank you very much for watching my video. Hope you all had a great weekend. And I, I'm sure we're all very excited for this game midweek for Barcelona. And I just love the way that Hansi Flick is making this team play. So, Visca Barca as always. Hope you all have a great rest of your day and see you all later. Peace.